Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru. MSI exhibited immaculate timing when they displayed the MEG X399 Creation motherboard at Computex. It was immediately after AMD had done their announcement about the 32 core Threadripper, 2990WX, CPU and also 24 core, and the Ryzen TDP from 180 watts to 250 watts. And all our thoughts were, well, what the heck are you going to plug that into then? Motherboards, they're going to be pulled to their knees. And then we saw this. Now, I must confess, I am not mad keen on the model name. It doesn't mean a whole lot to me. But nonetheless, the motherboard itself is absolutely awesome. EATX form factor, 16 plus 3 phase VRMs, PCI Express, M.2, RGB, just an amazing list of features. In addition, in the package, you get this device that looks like a graphics card. It is the M.2 Expander Aero. I mean, not the greatest name, but the idea is it's a PCI Express card that supports four M.2 SSDs in RAID. Uh, and obviously the idea is you've got a load of cooling to keep them under control. And you also naturally get Wi-Fi. It, uh, it has a huge list of features, but <laughs> sad to say, the VRMs are the focus of interest. And I must confess, when I saw it on display, I couldn't quite believe my eyes. We're up close and ready for the beauty shot. So off with the plastic shroud over the IO and the audio, which has some RGB. Put that to one side. Off with the M.2 heat sinks and covers. Uh, basically slabs of aluminium uh, with thermal pads. I've already uh, installed an M.2 in this position for testing. These have their uh, protective material in place. That is, <laughs> might look like nothing. It's just a sort of a, a rubber washer. Very sensible. It means that the uh, cover doesn't rattle around if you haven't installed an M.2 in that position. It does also mean that when you put the cover back, as I haven't done with this, you should also replace the uh, thermal uh, protection uh, because this also had a rubber washer, which means it doesn't rattle around. Uh, very cheap, very simple. Then the motherboard itself. So off with the VRM heat sinks, which are substantial aluminium affairs, slab-like, uh, not a sort of high-end finned. Uh, so Personally, I'd give that a sort of a 6 out of 10, a 7 out of 10. It's kind of reminiscent of some of the X299 stuff we've seen, which is not to be applauded. Uh, having said that, spoiler alert, during the testing, no problem, because the VRMs themselves really super duper high end. So there we have it. 16 phases for the CPU, 3 for the uh, SOC, job done. And how on earth do you have 16 plus 3, 19 in total? The answer is you don't. You have 16 on one controller, which is indeed doubled. Uh, this little bracket goes on the back of that away around as a kind of combination heat sink stroke uh, retention device. And you have, as I say, so it's uh, an eight phase controller, which is doubled to give you 16, which means there's nothing left over for the SOC. So you have another 35201 controller handling the uh, SOC on its own. We have 16 phases for the uh, vehicle and they appear to be 70 amp phases. Uh, up to now, the highest I've come across is rated at 60 amp, but these appear to be 70 amp, and that gives us a, a total theoretical figure of 1,120 amps for the CPU. I mean, blimey, that's just a huge amount. Uh, going around the rest of the board, so we've got on the I.O. panel, uh, it's perfectly nice. Audio, pair of gigabits, we've got USB Type-C, so that's USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, USB 3s, we've got a uh, reset button for the uh, CMOS, which is all fine, and we've got Wi-Fi. Um, quite a lot of I.O., but it kind of feels like they could have done a bit more. Would have been nice to see that 10 gigabit, but hey ho. We've got four PCI Express slots. I think it's fair to say that all this hardware has kind of shifted everything down one notch. It kind of does appear a little bit cramped. Ask yourself, do you actually need four PCI Express slots or would you have got by quite happily with three? Uh, personally, I think three. Obviously, the M.2 that goes there means that these are spaced wide, which means the rest gets a little bit 
They could have taken that out, frankly, but uh, such is life. Going around the ball, we've got plenty of uh, headers for fans and connectors. We do have a bit of an issue in this corner. We've got uh, debug for the bias, we've got power reset buttons, and we've got one of these blooming overclocking uh, controls. It goes up to 11. This seems to me to be entirely misplaced on this motherboard. I would much happier without that. Uh, we've got two 8-pin EPS connectors up top, which for um, a board with this kind of a current delivery is not unreasonable. More uh, headers for fans. Uh, there we've got the main power. Here we've got two USB 3s. There we've got a bunch of SATA. Uh, if you take the combination of M.2, PCI Express and SATA, the amount of I.O. is just absolutely phenomenal. You're going to have no issue with storage whatsoever. And don't forget, you get that riser card that supports four M.2s that will take up one year PCI Express potentially. Uh, essentially, storage on this board is just unlimited. Uh, there is, with the exception of that, and the fact that these slots are slightly cramped. So let us say that. Other than that, this board has massive potential. I'm using the same setup I used for the Gigabyte Exion on an extreme board uh, just the other day. So we have a liquid cooling system uh, on the CPU, which is a 2990WX32 core Threadripper. GTX 80 Ti graphics card, which is air cooled, therefore it's nothing to do with anything. Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt power supply, 240mm rad, 45mm thick, D5 pump, Mayhem's Pastel Purple, and it's a Heat Killer 4 CPU block. This gubbins here is the Powernetics power monitoring hardware that I uh, went over in some detail in that Gigabyte review. If you've not uh, watched it, suggest you head over and take a look. So we're going to do an initial run. The BIOS is set to default, except I've enabled XMP. Well, you know, the AMD equivalent of XMP. And here we have Cinebench, so processor clocks, uh, 2 gigahertz nominally run Cinebench on the Mighty 32 core, and the CPU frankly does. There we go, so 3.15 gigahertz, 3.2, just over 3.2 actually. Score, 5100. As we've already discussed, or previously discussed rather, that is evidence that the CPU is power limited. So we go in the BIOS, overclock settings, CPU features, precision boost, uh, let's turn off cool and quiet while we're there, precision boost overdrive, set that to do you want manual or enabled. Let's go manual and then we'll change PPT to, uh, let's go for 500, let's just put a huge number in. TDC for 80 amps and EDC 550 amps. Save. Here we are back in Windows and we simply run Cinebench. So previously we've got 5100 with the power capped to the TDP 250 watts on auto. 5853. Actually, let's just run that again. I wasn't watching the CPU at the time. And the CPU is going to boost to. 3.8, 3.7, gigahertz. So simply turning off the power cap, 5,800. And now we're gonna run Blender. I've simply raised the power limit. However, this motherboard can supply so much juice that essentially it's overclocked. It's at the speed that uh, the ASUS ROG Zenith, for example, will barely pull manually overclocked. This is doing it dynamically, which is pretty darn impressive. So that figure there, is the MOSFET figure. This is the Panetic software showing the power draw, which is currently for the actual uh, CPU cores around the 16 watt, well, 18 watts actually. And this is Blender. And we just start it running. Wall socket figure, 550 climbing, just, uh, just under seven, 690, 690 watts at the wall socket. CPU figure is 445 or so. MOSFETs are at 46 degrees and climbing. The system is lovely and stable. The power draw is just sitting there rock solid, which means there's no danger of any throttling. MOSFETs are up at 57. MOSFETs are now hitting 60, and now they're dropping off because the test is finished, that therefore the uh, power draw has dropped off, so the temp drops back. Uh, my previous testing, if I hammered it around Blender a few times, I'd get the MOSFETs up to 65. 65. Uh, at this sort of clock speed on this processor is just awesome. Let's do a quick spot of overclocking. Let's just take the CPU ratio up to 40 for 4 gigahertz. 
leave XMP enabled. CPU core voltage, you'll notice at the moment is saying it's 1.34. Let's just punch in a manual figure, 1.35. Yes, that is high, but we're actually trying to prove a point here about the VRMs and the power hardware rather than anything else. And then we'll put load line calibration up to six. It goes up to, yep, yeah, goes up to eight in total. Here we are back in Blender. So the uh, VRMs are nice and cool at 37. Uh, system sitting there drawing 200 watts at the wall socket, even at idle. But the actual CPU part, the equation is like 25 watts. And we start Blender running. CPU power draw, you will note, is barely higher than it was when it was running dynamic. At the moment, if anything, system power draw is lower than the dynamic figure was previously because that's around 700 watts. Just for laughs, let's just double check the speed is indeed 4 gigahertz. There we go. Go back to the VRMs. There. 4 gigahertz on your 32 core Threadripper. VRMs are currently at 55, CPU 67, and this at 400 and in round money, 450 watts of power draw. And now we've come to the end of the test and the VRMs just as cool as cool can be. Those results are stunning in every single respect, in terms of performance, undeniably, uh, and yet in terms of cooling, CPU cooling is pretty darn good, but then this is a decent CPU cooling setup. VRM cooling is just absolutely mind-blowing. I've added a fan. I mean, I've got a 120 more fan. It's an 800 uh, RPM fan. It's not a fast fan. I'm on an open test bench, admittedly, but the VRMs just remain cool. It's inherent. The hardware is top-notch. There are loads of VRMs. It just works. The design of this board in that regard is just excellent. I have no criticism whatsoever of the power hardware on this motherboard at all. It's the best I've ever seen. And to my mind, overclocking on this board is just foolish. There's no need. Lift the power cap, let the thing get on with it. Uh, you can, if you choose, use AMD's Ryzen Master software to do something similar, but frankly, go in the bar. I mean, I prefer it if the bias did it for you automatically, but never mind that. Go in the bias, raise the power cap, job done, enjoy your performance. I mean, it's not for gamers as far as I'm concerned. This is a workstation board, but the results are just mind boggling. Well done, MSI. MSI Meg X39 and Creation is a stunning motherboard. Uh, I can see people who edit videos lining up to buy this all day long as it supports the 32 core Threadripper with epic, apologies for the pun, power delivery. Uh, line up a huge number of VRMs, make them super high-end VRMs, have a separate controller for the SOC, wowza, job done. Uh, the temperatures, the, the low temperatures, I mean, uh, of this motherboard when it's working really hard are just a revelation. Add in the ability for really straightforward M.2 uh, SSD RAID, and yup, a system, I think we can agree for people who uh, earn money from their computer for a living. Balanced against that, you've got an overclocking knob, you've got a load of RGB, and that doesn't really sit with me on a workstation. Similarly, two gigabit uh, Ethernet NICs rather than a 10 gigabit. That's not a problem because obviously you can add in 10 gigabit in a separate uh, card. Nonetheless, it would be good to see it on the I.O. panel. However, overall, the hardware, the way that MSI is supporting latest Threadrippers, just absolutely fabulous. Pricing is entirely reasonable. There is no doubt in my mind that MSI has set a new standard for the high-end desktop market. This motherboard is just truly superb. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button to tell you about new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is the MSI Meg X399 Creation 